In this episode, we are going to build our more permanent iron and copper mining setups, automate basic items we will be using throughout the entire game, and unlock what I consider the best tool in the game. So do me a huge favor, like the video, sit back and enjoy. In this episode, the first thing we need to set up is our basic iron and copper production so that everything is nearby. This little patch of iron is not necessarily big enough. We don't have a lot of space out here. So one thing that I found to be very useful is if you go right behind it, you actually have access to a couple iron nodes right next to each other. So you can see there's one over here to the left and one to the right. This one actually can be expanded so that it has more surface that we can mine. So we're just going to go ahead and craft some mining drills and some smelters. And then we want a little bit of power floors. Before we do anything else, we are going to lower the ground here and flatten it out so that everything is nice and tidy when we build it. That's perfect for now, actually. So now we'll place down a few miners. You'll want to leave enough room so that you can utilize that third exit sometime in the near future we'll place down some power floors to even out the floor right here and then we'll plop down the second miner right here followed by the third miner next we'll add a belt we're gonna have it go this way we'll add some inserters we'll do two per miner and then we'll put in some plant matter. Now we'll just place a basic smelting setup right now. We're actually going to come this way so that we can clear this passage right here for now. And then we'll place some smelters that will grab the ore from this belt then add two inserters per smelter. Again, remembering our two for one ratio. And then they will output onto this belt right here. For the output, we just need the one inserter. Then we place our plant matter. And now we got the iron all done. All right. While we're waiting for us to set up the copper we're just gonna grab the iron ore and slap it in this box for now perfect now we'll go on to the other side over here and do the same thing for copper just so that it's a little bit closer than the other stuff so we don't always have to walk back to the beginning to get our basic copper and iron so again here this side you don't really have much access to the node from here so what i like to do you can see if we wrap around on this side we can actually get behind the copper node but it gets much wider so if we use the mole we could just follow the copper see look how wide this is now and if we go a little bit more we'll open up into the clearing near the river and now we just want to flatten it out so that we have a clean exit. Now we just want to make this room a little bit bigger to make room for all the machines we are going to need. So we'll just expand a little bit. All right, so we just want to have a nice, like as much room as we can here. And then we'll just belt it back towards the main area right here. So we just want to make sure it's nice and open. There you go, just like this. So on this side, we are going to craft three more mining drills and we'll want to make sure we have three smelters also. We'll place down our three miners. You don't have to be right next to the node. The miners will expand. We'll fill these with plant matter. Belt down this way. 
Now, because it goes down, we're just going to slap some floors just to make this kind of even for now. The, the whole thing will have power floors later anyway, so that's not the end of the world. And then we'll add two inserters per miner. We'll have to craft some more. Now we'll place down three smelters, followed by some inserters. I'll actually just put one per smelter for now because we are low on inserters. And we'll add some plant matter to these smelters right here. Now we need to open this up a little bit more. Okay, perfect. We're missing some inserters because we don't have enough copper and iron. So we'll go back to the main base and get it. But in the meantime, what we can do is just manually slap them in there so that it could start producing the ingots right away. All right, so we'll grab all the copper ingots we, we can grab right now. And then we'll go get our iron ingots. We want to just craft more inserters so that it's ready to go. And we'll just head over back to the starter base to grab the copper and iron. Back to the main Victor terminal now. It's important that you try to be always manually crafting something. This will help speed up your progression. And we'll cr craft a whole bunch of power floors as we are working. We'll go finish the copper section with the inserters now. We'll grab these light sticks and just place them closer to our actual machinery so we can actually see a little bit. Now we'll add all the inserters that we are missing. We'll fill in the blank spots here with more power floors. So now we built all the way down here. And we'll go as far as we can to give more room for the smelters. And then bring it in like this. We'll add the inserters for the outputs. So again, same thing. Just for now, we are going to grab some copper ore and put it in a box until we're ready to use it. We should be able to put down another miner here because we are going to need quite a bit of copper. And then with that, we can add another smelter. We'll just add another inserter for the storage here temporarily. Now that we have our iron and copper setups done, it's time to set up our first production floor. And to do that, we will add a power floor that spans across the entire river from one side to the next. We'll grab all these lights and move them onto the platform so we can see a little bit better. So the first thing we are going to want to do is bring in this line of copper onto this platform. And we'll bring it all the way back to this side. For the iron, the way we are going to do that is we'll try to line up with just about where it would come in and we'll just build a tunnel and head straight for our iron setup over there now for now we'll pass it down here but later on i'll be bringing it up on top instead because we're actually gonna craft a lot of the basic iron stuff up here in this area so we'll just make some room here so that we can pass the belt Bring the belt over this way and then up here and then we'll just bring this platform this way and then we'll bring that belt all the way back to this end. And now we've got our copper ingots and we've got our iron ingots crisscrossing like this. As you can see we have more copper than iron. 
So we are just going to add another iron miner right over here so that we can match the output of the copper. Then we'll add another smelter right here. Now we'll have our output match on both sides. So now we need to craft a few assemblers. And while those are crafting, I'm going to send a power floor, just a one liner, all the way to our current crank generator setup right here. And then activate the cranks again. And now you'll see the whole power floor over there is now connected. The first thing you'll want to do is set up the basic automation for the basic items. The ones that are the most important are the conveyor belts, the inserters, and the power floors. Because those are the ones you'll use the most. So if we look at what this needs, this needs copper wires and, and iron ingots. And these need mechanical components and so does the inserters. So we'll look at the mechanical components. Those actually only need the ingots first though we need to craft some long inserters and some inserters we are going to need a lot of long inserters going forward and so it's best to start crafting them now and while we have these crafting we are going to go grab all the ingots we have from the copper and iron facilities and our starter facility making sure to grab plant matter on the way so one thing that I actually want to set up too before we do anything else, and this is good to do temporarily until we can set it up fully automated, is to put an assembler down and set it to bio brick. And then by now you should have a ton of limestone. So what you could do is put all these limestone in a storage and then use two fast inserters to slap them in this assembler. And then you'll want to do the same thing over here on the other side for the plant matter. And then we'll output into this box right here. Whenever we walk by here, we'll just drop our plant matter. We'll drop our limestone and then it'll create some bio bricks for us so that we can then use it to to power up our machines a little bit more efficiently. So you can see right now we don't have enough power. So what I like to do here is put down a platform over this river and have it expand towards our starter base. And then grab our crank generators that we already have placed down and slap them down on this new platform. And then we'll dig towards our starter base to make room for more crank generators. And we'll add some more power floors. And add more cranks. All right. Now we just need to bring this back. So. For now, we are just going to bring the floor to our existing line over here and then connect the two lines together. We'll then remove the line that was heading towards the core composer and then we'll just add a new line closer Good to the cranks. Production breaker. I know how oddly appetizing they look, but you'll be happier if you stick to using them as fuel. All right, the first things you should start to automate are the inserters, the conveyor belts, and the power floors, because those are the things you are going to use the most. We'll do the power floor so that we can extend first. So what we can actually do is put down an assembler near the end of the platform. Then we'll grab a long inserter to grab the copper, and this will create some copper wires. And from the copper wires, we are then going to go into an assembler that will be doing the power floors. We'll add a fast inserter between the machines and two regular inserters going into the second assembler from the iron. I'll extend the power floor here to give us more room. 
For now, we'll just slap them in this box right here. Although I will probably move this later. We'll need some fast inserters for this one because at the rate that it fills, we'll definitely want to be able to grab these as quick as we can. All right, so our first process is done and automated. We can then also add another assembler on the other side this time. And this one will be doing some stairs. And from here, we'll just grab some iron and grab some wires from the middle assembler and then slap that into a box just like we did for the other one with some fast inserters also because they go real quick. Next, we'll put down another assembler and we'll set this to be doing some belts. Now, these require mechanical components. So in order to do that, we we'll want to find a way to bring some mechanical components over. And the best way to do that is to just clear these belts. We'll bring down a belt like this, and then we'll just hop over like that. Whoops. Except the other way for this one right here. For the mechanical components, we're going to bring the copper line all the way down here. Your stuff has places to go and machines to meet, Breaker. Keep building those conveyor belts. We'll start making some room so that we can bring the iron belt over there. We'll have to move the way the copper line gets brought, though, to make room for the iron. But now we just want to have this come over here and then we'll just go over like that and there you go we'll place down two assemblers just like this we'll need some power floors here so let's go get some here's a tip and limit the amount of items that are stored in the storage by just filling the other slots in the storage with something else Doing so will limit the total amount, in this case, stairs to 2,500 stairs. And when it gets full, the ingots will overflow down the line to help the other machines. We are currently out of power, so I'm going to go crank those generators. And we have to grab our power floors. See? Nice 1,000 power floors. Power floors we're going to use a ton of, so I don't mind if it just continuously creates them, but... There is a maximum, I think, that we would need at any one single time. And I think that we could just pretty much give it... Ah, uh, let's just give it two rows. I think they produce fast enough that this won't be a problem. A lot of things use these mechanical components. So that's why I like to try to set up a separate section for them. In my first playthrough, I did not do that, and I found that it created such a spaghetti playstyle of always trying to figure out where to bring those. We'll set these to be doing mechanical components, and then we'll feed them some iron. And add long inserters for the copper. Actually transfer this into a fast inserter, and add the copper long inserter here. Okay, and then we'll release with a fast inserter. Okay, same thing with this one. We're gonna add a belt and we'll release with another fast inserter. And this will continuously upgrade, add more, change it up. Once we have stack inserters, having one will be fine, except for this, the long one, but we'll probably just come this way. And same thing with the iron. Okay, but for now that works. And now that we have something here, we'll add three normal inserters. And then we'll add a storage box. And we need a couple fast inserters for this one. Now we're gonna run out of fast inserters really quick. So I don't wanna overdo it, but I think for these basic items, it's important to use fast inserters. It crafts them so quick. See here, we only really need two. Once it gets going and everything backs up, there two is more than enough. All right, now we'll craft a few more assemblers. We'll crank the cranks. And then we'll start working on the purple research cores. Now you can see here we're running out of iron, which means things are starting to lose its power. So we're just going to go ahead and start using this bio brick. 
And we'll also add the third inserter output here. We'll grab the iron. Okay, the ingots are coming now. We'll probably do the same thing on the copper side, but we don't have that much bio brick right now. Grab all the belts we can right now. Oh, see when you... <laughs> see, that's the one thing. I'm used to hitting space to grab all the items, right? And uh, that's the one problem with doing this method is if you hit space, you just grabbed everything. I think I saw somewhere they are going to add the ability to limit the storage. So we want to do research cores, but we need some wire too. So we'll add an assembler right next to this one. We're going to grab some copper to turn that into some wire. And then this wire is going to go into this right here. It needs two copper wires. So realistically, we only need one inserter here. And then we need some of this mechanical components. So the way to do that again is we we'll want to see where we want to go. We want to go down this line right here. So what we are going to do, we'll just destroy three wide of the belt. We're just going to split like this. And then we'll just go back this way and then this way. Then we'll add two inserters for the mechanical components. For now, we'll send them to a storage container. But later on, we are going to want to send them over there to our core composer area. But for now, this will do. We just have to go crank the generators one more time. The last basic items we need to do are the inserters. So we'll add an assembler right here next to the mechanical components. We'll add an inserter. We'll set this to be doing inserters. And then we'll add another two inserters. And then we'll do the storage box just like this. And we'll grab two of these. Then we'll want to do the long inserters. So we'll add an assembler. We'll set it to do long inserters. And they also require mechanical components. So here we'll do the same thing. We'll delete three wide. We'll go up here. And then we'll replace it. We'll add two inserters. We'll just put one inserter to move one from the assembler into here. And we'll remove this inserter so that one goes into storage and one goes into the long inserter assembler. Remove one inserter because we only need one mechanical component per inserter added here. You can see. So we don't need to like grab so much. In fact, we'll just delete this. Add a storage container for the long inserters and an inserter. And we'll fill the box with limestone because we only really need like less than one row worth of long inserters. So. If you press alt, you'll see what's being produced in each machine. I like to play with this turned on all the time. So we got our two inserters. We've got our belts. We got our power floors and the ladder is over here and we're creating the power cores over there. I'm going to see if we have any power cores. We do. We see we already have 44 of them. So we are going to go crank and then dump the power cores in the storage by the core composer. So now we need more mechanical parts and we also actually need a ton more iron. I also need to set up some iron automation here. So we'll add more space. So we'll add an assembler and a long inserter to grab the iron. We'll set this to produce iron components. And then we'll add a second assembler right next to it. And then add a long inserter to grab the iron and two regular inserters to grab the iron components. We'll set the assembler to be doing storage containers now. The iron is having an issue because we're not producing enough. So that we'll have to fix. Now we'll add a container to store the containers <laughs> and slap that in here. Perfect. And then we'll just do the limestone again. This one we don't need that much. I would argue three, even three is overkill. Okay, so if we expand over here real quick, we'll be able to 
create more mechanical components and I'll fix some of our issues right now. We'll expand the power floors. We'll create two more assemblers. We'll have we'll be automating all these most likely next episode, but we'll see. We just need to modify these belts so that we can have them keep going while turning over here. So we'll make the iron line keep going down here. And then we'll fix this line. We'll probably have to add some power floors. We'll add it all the way over there and some over here. And since we can't have two splitters right next to each other, we'll just move this belt backwards and then we'll have it go around and go over and then meet up with this over here. Now we can add our two assemblers, but we'll now need to, we'll have to dig just a little bit further in now to make room for the belts. And now you get to see this too. So we'll do that next episode or do we ah uh, maybe we'll do it this episode right after hey a battery pack sorry an accumulator substation i'll try to go easier on the recon slang it might help you guess at what those signal names are short codes for accumulators won't matter for a while but get in the habit of scanning anything and everything you find in places like these it can only help We'll add two inserters for each assembler for the iron and then two inserters for the copper. We'll set both of these to be producing mechanical components. Add two long inserters for the copper. Then we'll belt the output straight into the other line over here. And we're just outputting like this. So we doubled our mechanical components. Now we need to expand the iron. So we'll expand the line that goes out. We'll have it come the iron all the way down here. Take a turn just for now. We'll delete the old line. Now we'll remove this inserter. We'll remove the, um, a couple more smelters, but we'll add another mining drill. Expand the line and add some inserters. Then we'll add another smelter and then add our two inserters for the input and one for the output. So overall, we're sending two more iron ingots than we were. So hopefully that'll be okay enough for now. Okay, so now we are going to go over here and scan all the broken accumulators and see what we can do. They want us to scan 10 accumulators, but I'll scan all that I can to grab extra components. We'll check out this container right here. 300 power floors. Nice. Got a scan high voltage cable. That's good. All right, let's head in. If anyone else is still around, they wouldn't be here. These places were pretty much built and left alone. So that's our first blue core fragment research. We need to find three more. And that's for a mole speed two tech upgrade. Okay. We got three more cranks. And the hover pack. That, by the way, is very good. This sector was a dream come true for hydroelectric power. It isn't surprising that we took accumulator construction seriously down here. I faintly remember power sources in other sectors that were even stronger, but they also tended to do things like explode, set things on fire, create giant clouds of poison. You get the drift. So here we're activating some faster walking speed and the hover pack. You can't go wrong with a good old-fashioned river. Now the hover pack 
is really good because if you hit double space, you can actually hover on top and place da things down from almost a top view. You can upgrade this hover pack later on down the road to go even higher and fly faster. So it does follow the terrain, like it's got a set height. So see, so yeah, as you're, you're falling down from this, it does follow the terrain, right? So now we've got the cranks going. We'll just drop these research cores in here. So in this episode, we pretty much set up the basic stuff we are going to need in mass, like the inserters, the belts, the power floors, and some ladders. And we have a basic iron, a basic copper setup. And we've just went and visited this and got our hover pack. And we've got the basic power cores automated too. I'd like to thank all my Patreons who make these types of videos possible.